Good morning, all of you, my Sunday school class, and those that may be listening in. I just am so excited to be here. It's Resurrection Day. It is April the the 12th, actually, Sunday, April the 12th. And it's different. We're celebrating Easter differently than ever I have experienced, and probably any of you. We're always in church, and we just want to be in church. We're not want to be in church just because it's Easter, because really Resurrection Day is every day for us, because he is alive. And I love the scripture that says in John 11, 25, I'm going to read that. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me Though he may die, he shall live. Jesus is alive. He is alive and he's sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He is alive. He is alive. And he is alive in me. He lives in me and he is alive and he is active. Present active. He is doing something. And I'm so happy that I can be a part of what he is doing. And he gives me the power to do that through the resurrection and the life. That's the lesson that we're doing today. It's found in your book on page 32. And for those that are uh, don't have a Sunday school book, you have your, your Bible, God's Word, and it's in John 20, verses 1 through 18. But before we begin reading our lesson, I had something else that I would like for you to listen to. It's found in 1 Peter 1. I'm going to start with verse 3 and read to verse 8. 1 Peter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And I'm going to read verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Everything that Jesus taught, everything that Jesus said is true. He is alive. When he gave up the ghost and he suffered on that cross for you, for me, for all mankind, he did it as a human. And he wasn't, God wasn't willing that any should suffer, but that all should come to repentance through Jesus Christ. And through Jesus and what he did on the cross, you have, you have the choice now to choose salvation. This is the day. He is alive and he is now sitting in in, on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And everything he said is true. And we're going to read about that. We're going to read about the account in John. 
And I love John. I love the Gospel of John. Anytime that I speak to somebody and they're wanting to read the Bible and they're, they're new and they want to get started, I always say, go to the book of John. It is just all of God's word is amazing. We love all his truths. But John has a great way of sharing Christ and the suffering and what he did and how he believed and is believing. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to know, not just on Easter, not just today, but every day, that you can have him in your heart. You can have Christ come in. The penalty was paid. The gift is free. Receive his gift of salvation. And then have the power to become the son of God. You have that power then to walk. People say to me, oh, I just, I, I can't do it. There's just too much. I don't, I want to give up this. Or they're trying to look at it as them doing it. But it's not about them. It's about what Christ can do. And once he enters in and you yield up your will to him, there is no, it's joy. That's what it spoke of, unspeakable joy, a peace that you can rest in when he is alive in your soul. And he begins to dig out and clean up and change and transform you by the renewing of your mind. And you become a new creature in Christ. I love that. The resurrection and the life. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's begin in John 20, beginning with verse 1. And I'm going to read it in, in the Bible here. So... You can look at it in your book, but I'm also going to read it here. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, into the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the tomb. Then she runs and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, which is John, and came to the tomb. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the tomb. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then comes Simon Peter, following him, and went into the tomb, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloths, linen clothes, excuse me, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the tomb, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they knew not the, the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again into their own home. But Mary stood without at the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And see two angels, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. 
and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus says unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Tell me where you put him, where you took him, and I'll take him away. And Jesus says unto her, Mary, and she turned herself, and she says unto him, Rabboni, Rabbi, which is teacher, master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, do not cling, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples, that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. And that's where we're going to close right there of our reading. I will go back to talk to you a little bit about this, each of these comments, of these scriptures. But I just think about Jesus, Mary. Here's Mary Magdalene. She loved Jesus so much, and you know they had... They had taken and they had they had put uh, prepared Jesus' body for burial, put on spices, put on it said in one commentary, a hundred pounds of fragrances and spices and wrapped him up like a mummy, like a mummified him. Just put him in that tomb. And they had not finished what they needed to do, and the ladies had gotten up early and they ran into the tomb to go to the tomb, and they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And they were like, where is he? And, and Mary, she was so emotional, and she loved her, her Lord and her Jesus. And out of emotion, she was like, he's not here. Where is he? Now, when John had gotten there, he had waited at the tomb, it said. He had run, he had run ahead of Peter. And he waited at the tomb. And then Peter just went right on in. And they saw it looked like that Jesus' body had just taken away, evaporated out of there. The, the clothes and the linens were laid in such that it, no one had unwrapped it. It's just like Jesus' body was taken. And notice what John said. And John said in verse 8, Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside and saw and believed. Remembering what Jesus had said of the scriptures that he must rise again, he believed that quickly. He knew that Jesus had risen. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. So the other disciple, too, Peter, believed. They knew. But Mary, she, she didn't recognize it was Jesus. She looked in there, and she went, and there were angels. Maybe she didn't see the cloths, but she just saw the angels, and they said, Woman, what are you, what are you looking for? What are you, who are you looking for? Jesus, what have you done with them? And then she turned, and she saw the, Jesus was there, but she recognized him as a gardener, maybe. And said, please tell me where Jesus is so I can get him and do what needs to be done for him. He's my Lord. And Jesus said, Mary? <laughs> Jesus knows her name. He knows your name. He knows me. He said, Mary. And when Jesus said, Mary, she then recognized his tone. She knew it was him. And the love just came over her. And she 
said, Master, teacher. Jesus knew her name. Of course he knew her name. He knows each and every one of us by name. But the thing was that she recognized who it was because he said, Mary. He is saying, Cindy. He is saying, each and every one of you, Jerry. All my family members, he's called their names. Are you listening to him? Are you hearing him? Do you recognize him for who he is and what he's done? He'll call your name and do you say, yes, Lord, I hear you. You are my savior. I'm listening and I want to be what you need me to be. Then Mary wanted to touch him, and he says, Do not touch me. Do not touch me, for I have not ascended into my Father. But I think about that. Do not touch me. But yet, not long in the next chapter, you see Jesus coming in to the, all the disciples, and Thomas, doubting Thomas, who said, I'm not going to believe until I can touch him and see him and feel his scars. And no, I won't believe. Because the others were believing, and he said, I don't believe that. And then he tells Thomas to touch him. For the same reason that he told Mary not to. He wanted Mary to realize that you've got to believe because you know me, not by seeing me, not by touching me, but by having a relationship that Jesus has come in and he knows you and you know him and you hear his voice and you recognize him through his word and his truth and what he has done. Same reason. That's what he was telling to, to Thomas. Thomas, touch me, but I don't want you to believe because you touched me or you have seen me with your eyes physically. Blessed are those that do not see me physically, but they see me by faith. For that's how it is. God's grace given to us that he died. He gave us his son, Jesus. He died on that cross. He suffered and it was black. And darkness filled everywhere of the land. But that wasn't the end. Jesus came alive. He had risen. He had victory over the grave, over sin and death. He tasted eternal death for me, for you. And he had victory. For he did that in his humanity. He was able to to do what God needed him to be, do, his father. And because of that, I can have that same victory. And I can believe who he is without seeing him physically, with my senses, without touching him. Because I see him in his word, in his truth, by grace, through my faith. Knowing, and the Holy Spirit came upon them at that time. Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to them. And he wanted them to know that his, through his power, he will leave. He has to go to his Father. But you must stay and do, those, do the things, the work that must be done. I want others to know Christ, to have him in his, their hearts. He is the resurrection and the life. If you will repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you, he will come into your heart and he will forgive you and he will give you the power to live according to what he needs you to live, according to his truth. And he will grow you right where you are. You don't have to think, oh, well, I got to get way up here or I'm not going to be right. No. But from that moment when he enters into your spirit and you're in him and he's in you and it's mutual abiding, he gives you the power to walk as he walked. 
And how did he walk? He walked by faith, trusting. He walked trusting in his Father, just as we trust and walk. And we are growing in wisdom, just as he grew in wisdom. And what he does is he takes and he cleanses you of all your sin. You are a new creature in Christ. All things become new, 1 Corinthians. You have put on a whole new creature through Christ. And he cleanses you. And yes, you look the same, but he slowly starts transforming you. And you become this new creature. He changes things. From the inside out, you become a new character. That's the only way it can work. You receive him, and the more you receive and learn, the more you are changed into his image. And you can live holy and righteous in this present world. And I love that. And I can hear him say, Cindy, listen, I have you. You are my child, and I'm with you. I'm with you while you're quarantined. I have this. Trust me. Walk with me. Listen to my voice. I will give you the peace. Even in this tribulation, in this time of isolation from, from your families, I miss my family. This is the first time I have never been able to be with my some parts of my kids and my grandkids for Easter. It's it's so different. And yes, I'm going to go to the church and and get to help Jerry preach by filming him. I'm not preaching, <laughs> but I'm going to get to help as he's preaching, and I'm going to video. I'm just so grateful I can get to the church and do that. No, no one's there. Well, I take that back. The Holy Spirit's there, and all of your prayers are felt, and your sweet spirit is in that place. But it's so different, and it just seems strange that we're experiencing this. But at the same time, it's, it's not. Because God, don't count it strange. Don't count it weird. I'm with you. These things are going to happen. There's going to be times where we're, we're struggling or we have trials or these pestilences and, and all these diseases are going to come about. And God says, but fear not. This is the angel's like, woman, what are you doing? Don't be, don't be scared. And just as Jesus was taken away just like that he's going to come back so what are you upset about and i think about that when when there's so many people right now whose loved ones have passed away and they aren't even being able to really have a proper burial i think of georgie and i'm so sorry that georgie it's going through so much, and she feels alone, but yet she's not alone, and she tells me that. She has the Lord, and I know that, and I, that's such a great witness. If the, I think about my, my mother-in-law, who's over there, isolated too, not able to get out much. She sees her neighbors, and she walks, which is amazing, but she's, she's not alone. She has Christ, and he's walking with her. He talks with her daily, moment by moment. And she's lifting her eyes to him. And it's real. It's not a theory. It's not something that, oh, well, yeah, she's not alone. You know, she's got Jesus. No, she has her Lord saying, Chris, <laughs> I'm with you. He's with her, and he's with Georgie, and he's with all of us who have him in our hearts. We don't have to have that anxiety of not feeling a peace. He's there. Just as he said to Mary, 
Mary. And Mary had that emotion, and, and she, she wanted to do everything, just like all these people want to be there for their family, to have a proper burial, and to, to say, we support the family and come together, and that's not happening. But Mary stopped looking at that when she heard Jesus' voice. Oh, yes. He's going to be with his father. It's not about what I'm feeling. It's about what he did and how he had victory. And because of that, I can have that same power and victory. And I don't have to be defeated and alone and have Satan tell me these lies that you are. When I know he is there speaking. I, I know people say all the time, I can't wait to get to heaven so I can, I can see Jesus. And I can't wait. And I remember talking to Jerry about that. And he said, I see him now. <laughs> he's going to cry because it's true. I see him now. And we will recognize him. Because we know him now. We see him through his, through his word. And as we learn of him and we grow in him and we study and we do these readings and, and Sunday school classes and come together and listen to the preachers through his truth, we see him. We know him. And we can, we can say right now, I see him, and he knows me, and he's called me by my name, and he's given me what I need. Believe, he says, believe in me, not because you see me or touch me, but by faith. And not just any faith, faith in God's truth, faith in the true and one God. And I was going to read to you just real quick what I, a couple of things I said. Um, I know that I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I did have a mom and dad that knew of God and spoke about God, and, and the church still had an impact on people's lives, even in the world. And mom and dad wanted us to go to church, and I had a sister my older sister, Debbie, she always wanted to help us get to church, get us on the bus, or we'd get to church, and she'd read the Easter story. She always read the Christmas story to me. She always did that, but I know that as I got older, and I met Jerry, and I realized, what does it really mean to be a Christian, and what does it really mean what Jesus did? It was amazing because I saw who I was at that time. And I knew that I didn't have Christ. And I knew that I was wretched. Even though I knew I was a good girl, I didn't do anything wrong. I always obeyed. I made good grades. I did everything I could to keep the house going and everybody happy. But that didn't matter. I was empty. Christ filled my emptiness. And he forgave me and he entered in. And ever since then, I have been hungering for him and, and striving to, to do as he would have me do. Not by works, but by faith. Resting and growing and being changed. Um, I was going to say there was one thing that right after I met Jerry, he had asked me to go to church camp. And I said, well, I'd never been to church camp. I didn't know what to expect. And he was telling me all about it, that it was out in West Texas, Buffalo Gap, and that we had to wear, we couldn't wear shorts. We had to wear jeans at that time. And 
uh, dresses at night and skirt to the chapel. And I was just really nervous about it. But I was excited, too, because I'd never gone to a church camp. And I just remember when I was at that church camp, one one day or one morning early, we had an early rise, sunrise service. And we walked down to this grave or somewhere. I can't even remember all the details. But I remember there was a man that got up. And he sang, rise again. Go ahead, drive the nails in my hand. Laugh at me where you stand. Go ahead, mock my name. Say it isn't so, but you will see, because he will rise again, and he did. And that song, that Dallas Holmes song, spoke volumes to me, but more than that, the words, the man that stood up there and sang that song with passion, and he knew his Lord. He, he knew, I knew he knew his God. And he had a real relationship with them. That man was Tim Hickey, Pastor Tim Hickey. And it spoke so much to me. And there were so many men there. Of course, my father-in-law, Arthur, who was sharing and speaking in classes. That camp changed my life. Because I saw who I was and who I needed to be for him, and that I was lost, and what he did for me, and from that point on, I wanted to grow, and learn, and live, and, and praise him, and give him all the glory, and I, I loved it, and I wanted my family to know, and I prayed, and I went home seeking to share at any time with all my family, so they could know Jesus. And I wanted my children to know that, and they do. I'm so grateful that my girls love Jesus and serve him. He is alive in their hearts. They listen to his voice and their husbands and their children. You won't regret it. It's amazing. You will regret if you don't. But if you live for him who died for you, you will have a peace and a love and a joy and a hunger to serve him. And you don't ever want to put him back up on that cross and put him to shame. You will seek to live for him die to myself so that he can be alive in me. We saw what a difference a day can make in our world. I mean, just like overnight, we are all quarantined, doing our best to help people stay alive. And that's important. We love everyone and we want them not to get sick from this disease. But there was a day that made a big difference, much greater. And that was when Christ died on that cross, and in that, he rose. And because he is alive, and he did what he did, he can make a difference. And though you may be alive from this virus and doing well if you don't have your savior christ jesus in your heart you are dead you're spiritually dead and if you accept what he did into your heart he can be risen and alive in you every day not just easter every moment of every day. I lie in bed at night and I get up in the morning and I walk in his presence and he's with me, leading me, holding me, and guiding me. And I will tell you, it's worth it.
every minute. Taking one minute at a time, trusting Him. Because if you don't, you can get so overwhelmed. Even if you have Him in your heart and you're living for Him, if you concentrate on all that's going around in the world, it can become overwhelming. So take it one minute at a time. I'm calling you to rest. Rest. I love you. I love all of you. I want you to know that I want all of us to go and tell just what he said. Go and tell just what he said. I am the resurrection and the life. I love you. I want to pray right now. So let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you so much for you meeting here in this house, in my house here. I feel your presence. You are so amazing. Your Holy Spirit brings such peace and joy. And I ask, Father, that you will help all those who are listening to this lesson to really examine themselves. Help them, Father. Draw them to you if they already not are not yours. And those that are yours, just comfort them. Continue to be with them and strengthening them through your truth. Knowing that your Son is there making intercessions for us, praying on our behalf, calling us by our names. And we know you, Father, because you promised that you will never leave us and you are with us as we seek and we are trusting and following you. And I am so grateful. I hold on to that truth. And I hold on to what you did and who you are and I seek you with all my heart and all my mind and my soul and I pray that all these that are listening will do the same thank you for what you did on the cross thank you that you are now sitting on the right hand of your father almighty and you are there you are alive and I am alive because of that spiritually go with us continue to be with the doctors and the nurses and the staffs medical staff all over and our president and our vice president and his team help them to know when to start getting our country back on track for the economy to know that you are guiding and leading i just pray for that father that they will listen and do what is right Help us all. Thank you for all those who are doing their part. We love you in Jesus' name. Precious, holy, our lovely Savior.